Today marks two weeks since the high school massacre in Florida, and with the gun debate now white hot, once again across the U.S. comes that question. What happens next when it comes to guns? Well, as of now, I can tell you the answer is not much. But it could change if, and it's a giant if, lawmakers can actually come together in Washington. Now, on the state level, and even locally here, there are open-ended questions, but there is some movement. And for more on that, let's go to Andrew. And yesterday, Andrew, you gave a pulse check in terms of public polls, mm -hmm. what people wanted, what they supported, what they were against. Now, let's take a look geographically as to where we are as a nation. On this. We're going to do that too, Rich, but we're also going to look at those numbers again because the debate over the changes to the nation's gun laws, at least on the federal level, looks like it may hinge on a few variables. What's the public pressing for and will that pressure last? What does the NRA want and whether the White House will provide cover for anxious Republicans and also how certain reforms are defined. The devil really may be in the details on this. Here's what the public wants and the levels of support based on our averages of recent polls. Background checks, a waiting period, and a ban on sales to the mentally ill all enjoy 80% support or higher. But only one of those reforms, enhanced background checks, is among those likely to even be considered by Congress, along with raising the age for gun sales and a ban on bump stocks. And each might fail to pass through Congress. Once again, it's the details that will matter. On background checks, there are two proposals bouncing around in Congress right now. One would strengthen background checks by boosting the requirements for federal and state agencies to update records they give to the FBI, give incentives for states to do so, and penalize entities that don't. Now, this measure has some bipartisan support, but it still appears short of the votes needed to pass in the Senate to say nothing of the House. Another bipartisan bill would apply federal background checks to sales at gun shows, closing the so-called gun show loophole. It's not clear the level of support this has in the Senate, but the White House doesn't appear to be on board, and many Republicans aren't going to push for any bill on guns without the White House providing them some measure of political cover. Bump, banning bump stocks seems like a no-brainer, especially after they were used by the gunman in Las Vegas. But both the NRA and the White House prefer seeking a ban via executive order and regulation and not through a new law. Problem is, in 2013, the Obama ATF determined that it didn't have the authority to ban the mechanism that lets a semi-automatic weapon work essentially like a fully automatic one because the ATF can only regulate weapons and bump stocks aren't considered firearms, which could provide a technical loophole for critics of gun control to try to make it look like they're taking action when re in reality they're not. Finally, the idea of raising the age for gun sales to 21, that's already the law for handguns. The push now is to extend that to all firearms, especially semi-automatic weapons like the AR-15. The NRA opposes the idea. President Trump has been saying he supports the idea, but only in vague terms. And today the White House walked even that idea back, saying the president now only supports raising the age to purchase some weapons, and they didn't specify which. We will see what happens. So once again, with Washington's efforts on gun law reforms looking questionable, the focus shifts to the state and local level, just like it did after Sandy Hook. And once again, different states appear to be headed in different directions. Several states, including New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, Oregon, Washington, and Illinois, are considering measures that would strengthen their gun laws. New York's proposed changes are being considered by the Democratic-controlled Assembly and may not make it to Governor Cuomo's desk. Other states, including Indiana, Kansas, and South Dakota, are working to weaken gun restrictions. Ohio is studying some ideas. Florida just rejected some proposals, but see how much white there is on that map? Those are the states that aren't considering any reforms whatsoever. That means we may have to see more stories like this one. School superintendents in the lower Hudson Valley this week meeting and calling for greater gun control and better mental health funding. School officials obviously cannot change gun laws, but they can pressure lawmakers to try and do so, Rich. And I look for similar uh, activities by school boards or superintendents in New Jersey, Long Island, and Connecticut. Didn't see anything cooking just yet, but it's only been two weeks. But we are getting a tell, to use your poker term, Andrew, in terms of where Washington is or isn't on this. Um, the president, you know, take whatever he says with a grain of salt because it will change by the next news cycle. But at least he put the idea out there when he was talking to a bunch of governors. He said, half of you guys are scared of the NRA. You don't need to be. They want to do some stuff. Great I patience. think the lawmakers, by the way, right, um, said, yeah, well, you didn't exactly talk to them like we did, okay? <laughs> and they made it clear, don't do anything. So either the president will carry the water for this or it's not going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know really in the last day or so how much the early rhetoric um, is real because it seems that he's already starting to backtrack. 
Yeah, I mean, I was listening to Andrew's report, and it just every time I read about this, or you know, it's this crazy quilt of state laws that you know, you, you, this this seems to be, and it's really hard to figure out what state has this, what state wants to get rid of bump stocks, what state wants to raise the age, what state wants to get rid of AR-15s or at least a sale of them, and it's just it's very confusing. So you think, okay, we need some, maybe some federal leadership to have some kind of uniformity to this, you know, and you've got. <laughs> I've got a, a guy in the White House who thinks he would charge in there even without a gun. Barehanded. Yeah, yeah. barehanded. You know, it's like sort of sort of reminded me of that movie with Abraham Lincoln fighting the zombies. You know? <laughs> I mean, it was just like so. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a question of leadership. We haven't really heard from Paul Ryan, have we? And we haven't. No, heard from he Mitch said McConnell. he said specifically today, yeah. which I thought was interesting. I'm going to wait for the president to tell us what he wants us to do. Well, I think yeah. the tell from the president well. was was the walking back of the 21 year old age requirement. When at first it was going to be for all rifles and all long Everything. guns, yep. and now all of a sudden it's selected guns, and, and we'll see how how long that lasts. Keep in mind, he spoke over the weekend to Chris Cox, who is one of the public faces of the NRA, and, and I believe he had a conversation with Wayne LaPierre as well. Both of them. Uh, and, and it's only after those conversations that all of a sudden the White House is like, not so fast. Okay, so here's the variable. We saw these polls largely after Sandy Hook. If anything, they're even more right. pronounced. They are. Okay. Two other things. Companies, some of which said, I'm not associating my brand with the NRA anymore. Right. We'll see if there's blowback to them or not, but at least some people are putting their money where their mouth is. And finally, the kids. Now, I'm going to be down in D.C. for March 24th. I think a huge number are going to be there and across this country in rallies. Mm -hmm. It's an election year. If that perfect storm doesn't generate, forget some soul searching, but some political survival skills for folks, or maybe it it won't. It'll have a it won't have any impact at all. First guess for me right now, does this at all spur people to say, I gotta do something? Maybe I don't give them everything they want. Yeah. I'll do something because otherwise I'm gonna get I'm gonna lose my job in this in November. Well, or I not? Think, yeah, I, I think what's interesting about the student movement is you know, I mean, it sounds stupid, but Nicholas Cruz did at least one thing that that was a favor to this to the anti-gun movement, to the you know to the gun reform movement, which he did this in February. If this has been done in June. We wouldn't see a protracted uh, grassroots movement because everybody would be off from school, you know. But this happened in February, and it's going to go on. That's a, that's a great point. What we've seen historically from these kinds of incidents is that sentiment rises immediately thereafter for changes and reforms right. and then it ebbs uh, and so the question is can the either the students or can another event sort of continue the pressure that's put on lawmakers to try to get something done and keep in mind for a lot of Do lawmakers you think it does? I don't know I, I honestly don't know if the it's students are hide. enough it's harder to, it, to evade I think but you know. but you also it's not necessarily pressure on lawmakers to get something done it's to give the appearance of trying to get something done and that's what you're saying particularly in in Florida from Florida lawmakers who otherwise would be anti-gun reform they're at least talking about it because it, it covers yeah. them look we tried and I do know this mm. Democrats have tried to do this bipartisan now to try and get something done on the Hill. There'll be real pressure on them. If Democrat, Republicans don't do something soon, you better come up, Democrats, with something that's going to support their base, which will further fracture any attempt at a cooperative bill here. But this is what we're putting out there for you folks at home. Um, obviously, we'll continue to talk about this issue between now and then. But on Thursday, we are opening up our phone lines. You've heard from lawmakers on my show since this tragedy. You've heard from my panelists, myself as well. I want to hear from you. So here's our question. What would you like this Congress to do when it comes to gun control? You see the toll-free number there. We'll remind you, obviously, between now and then. But 6 o'clock on Thursday night, we open up those phone lines and get your perspective. All right, coming up next. President Trump, he's handling the gun debate just like he handles a lot of things. Say one thing one day, say something else the next, and changing positions seemingly by the news cycle. So should we listen to what he says or just what he does?